Hello everyone, I welcome everyone from around the world, wherever you're watching this video. Um, I appreciate everyone for sticking with us like thus far. It's been it's been um a number of weeks now we've you know we've been um trying to um demystify remote sensing. So we started um a YouTube series early last month and um basically we paused um the videos because um I wasn't feeling so well and um, now I'm like much better, so I just have to like conclude the YouTube series, and now this is the final, this is the final video. So uh, previously in week one, we discussed what remote sensing is. We talked about the forms of remote sensing. We talked about the process and application of remote sensing. Then week two, we moved on to. Um, I'll just link all these um, videos we've um, done in the past. In the description box so week two we spoke about the electromagnetic spectrum and how the electromagnetic energy interacts with um, the atmosphere and earth so week three we talked about the types of remote sensing the active and passive remote sensing we talked about um, the sensors um, we talked about characteristics of like satellites and we also uh, mentioned scanning so this week we'll be talking about digital image processing so um before we dive into the course for this week um i would like to mention um if you are new to this channel i would definitely appreciate it um if you like subscribe to this channel and also um we're trying to build a just special community as well so um we have a slack channel i'll also drop the link in the description if you'd like to join our slack channel um, you just get updates um, first and um, just I'll drop the link um, I'll drop the link as well in the description so you could just follow along um, with us so um, thank you for subscribing and thank you for sticking um, around for the final week of the YouTube series so um, this this week we'll be talking about digital image processing we'll be talking about the stages involved in processing our digital image we'll start with pre-processing they remove to image enhancement, transformation, and classification. So let's dive right in. So um, digital image processing. Basically, when we talk about digital image processing, it basically consists of all the operation that is performed on an original image, like a satellite image, to basically improve its quality for better human um, visual perception. So when we talk about um, digital image processing, basically what we're trying to talk about is um, all the various, like there are various operations that are performed on an original digital image. Um, these operations are basically performed to improve the quality of the image. And why do we want to improve the quality of the image? We basically want to improve the quality of the image for better human perception and also to enhance interpretation. Basically, we want to extract information from from the satellite image so before we do all of that we just need to like process the image so that's that's basically what digital um, image processing is all about um the process involves like numerous procedures including formatting and correcting of the data and um, also digital enhancements to facilitate better visual interpretation or even um, automated classification of targets and features entirely about the computer so we'll be talking about um we'll be, we'll be diving in and we'll be talking more about the digital image processing um as we move on so basically we we categorize like the the step involved in digital image processing um into pre-processing image enhancement image transformation and image classification so we'll be talking about each um each of this process um in the following slides so we'll be starting with pre-processing. So basically, um, pre-processing operation is sometimes pre-processing operation is sometimes referred to as image restoration. You might read some um, literatures, and it's called you 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 might not get to see pre-processing, and what you might see is image restoration and um, rectification. So basically, we are trying to talk about the same thing. So they are trying to um, basically the pre the pre-processing involved. Um, it involves restoring and um, rectifying the images for um, distortions um, and these distortions are basically 
you are basically unique to the sensors. To, to you are basically unique to the sensor in the, in the satellite or the platform, um, or the platform carrying the sensor. So we have um, two types. We have the um, geometric um, distortions, and we have the radiometric distortion. So um, in week in week three, I think or week two, we discussed about um, we discussed about radiometric resolution. So um, we'll just be um, diving more into how to um, correct for radiometric and um, geometric errors. So we'll move on to radiometric corrections. So basically, um, radiometric correction are basically to um, correct for radiometric errors or radiometric distortions when when the sensor sends the electromagnetic energy to it. Um, there's there's just this there's this variation between um, the energy that is sent to the earth and the energy that is um, received the energy um, the sensor basically um, that is returned to the sensor the energy the sensor captures so um, this variation is basically due to like the sun's azimuth um, elevation or the sensor response or atmospheric there are some at atmospheric conditions like fog that actually influence um, the energy that is being sent back and is being observed by the by the sensor. Therefore, in order to obtain the real reflectance or the irradiance, um, those atmospheric distortions must be corrected. So, um, for for geometric correction, we classify them into um, three different categories. The first one is um, the geometric correction um, where we are trying to correct the errors due to um, the effect of the sensor sensitivity we're trying to correct for sun angle and we're also trying to um, correct for atmospheric um, conditions so we'll just dive into the first one so um, that's um, radiometric corrections um, of effect due to like the sensors sensitivity so basically um, the the sensor is like very sensitive to like noise so we have a lot of noise in our image and um, this noise basically like they degrade or they like max they max out the true radiometric information um, of, of a digital image so basically our objective is to remove the noise and what we are trying to do is is to essentially restore an image to a close up approximation of the original scene as close as possible so um, essentially what we're trying to do is to restore an image um, to a close approximation um, of the original scene from which the um, from which the um, electromagnetic energy was sensed so um, the basic effect of this noise is we have line dropouts we have um, stripping on our image so um, because of this um, errors we've talked about and this noise um, it, it, it causes stuff like this so um, on this row we can see um, all the values in this row like all the digital numbers are zero 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 so um, we'll be talking about ways to correct this like later in the in, in the video so um, basically we have like line dropout and this is the way to cor correct it like it takes the mean of like the probably um, looking at the nearest neighbor but we'll talk about this like much later so but the the visual to see like the visual effects we have stuff like this so like these are line dropouts i mean if you work with um i think that's sentinel sorry if you work with landsat 7 you'd see um in some recent landsat 7 images you see like all of this line drops out all of this um line dropout so basically these are due to like noise in our um, in our image and line dropout basically it occurs due to recording problems when one of the detectors um, of the sensor gives wrong data, or, or basically one of the um, one of the one of the detectors of the sensor stop working, like when, when it stops functioning. So we have like um, line dropping out. So the drop lines are normally corrected by um, placing the line with the values of the uh, pixels, the, the pixel values. Uh, above it or below it or taking an average um, of the two so basically that was what was done here so yeah i have um i have the definition for image noise and these are basically unwanted unwanted disturbances in our image data and um the potential um source like is basically due to like the interference 
um, between like the sensor components. So next up, we'll just we'll move to um, the correction for sun angle. So um, the position of, of the sun relative to the earth, it changes, right? It changes basically depending on the time of the day and um, the day of the year. So the, the, the position of the sun basically changes like relatively to time of the day and um, the day of the year. So um, the, this, this basically makes the um, reflectance, that's the irradiance, it varies, um, it varies. So um, it varies with the seasonal change in the solar elevation angle and the changing distance between the uh, Earth and, and, and the Sun. So basically, um, this um, in, in infuse some um, errors, you know, relatively to the like Sun angle. So to correct for for the Sun angle, um, this is the formula we use. So um, so the absolute um, correction involves dividing the um, digital value in the image data by the um, sign of the solar elevation angle so next up we have um, atmospheric correction you know um, we learned in in the previous lessons that um, scattering basically occurs in the atmosphere when we're talking about the um, interactions of the electromagnetic energy um, with the atmosphere so basically what this scattering does is that it's um, it, it may reduce or attenuate some of the energy illuminating, some of the energy illuminating from from the Earth's surface. Remember, we we, we like um, discussed in full about the interactions um, in our previous section. So um, all these particles in the atmosphere basically um, attenuate what the what the um, what the sensor is getting back. Like it it basically disturbs the electromagnetic magnet, magnetic energy, and you know. Um, in the atmosphere, we have the cloud, we have we have water um, particles, and you know all these um, gases. So basically, all, all of this attenuates that energy that is bouncing off targets to the sensor. So um, sometimes it, it, it gives us um, an image that is like this. So um, for example, this is like an original image. And after the image has been corrected, so we have something like this. So this is basically a uh, is um is reduction um, of an aerial image. Um, so we've we've spoken about um the radiometric errors and its correction. So let's let's move up to um, let's move on to the geometric corrections. Geometric correction basically it's um it includes correcting for geometric distortions due to like the sensor to earth geometric variation and the conversion of the data to real world coordinates that is the um, lat and long so um, for geometric corrections they are basically intended to compensate for these distortions and um, some examples of the um, distortions are um, inclination of the satellite orbits to the polar axis rotation of the earth beneath satellites nature of the um nature of the um, earth surface so um division in altitude of the satellite so basically um what geometric correction are um what basically what geometric correction are intended for is to like compensate um for these distortions um so so the geometric representation um, of an image will be as close as possible to the real world most of these distortions are systematic or predictable in nature and they can be accounted for. So to account for, for it, we need to like accurately um, model the sensor and the platform motion and the geometric relationship um, of the platform with, with, um, with the Earth. So um, to, to basically correct for, for geometric distortion, what we do is um, geometric registration. So um, we have to like geometrically register the image. So this is um, also known as um, georeferencing. So that's a wrap regarding um, the preprocessing parts where we talked about um, radiometric errors and their correction and also geometric errors and their correction. So next up, we'll move to image enhancements. So basically um, image enhancements um, is basically used to um, describe the process that is applied to image 
to, to an image data to basically improve um, the pictorial quality. What we are doing in image enhancement is to basically uh, improve the, the pictorial quality for um, visual interpretation. We are trying to make um, an image that is, that is probably dark. We are trying to make it lighter. So looking at this image right, right here, so if you look at this image and you compare it to this image, they're the same, they're the same image, right? But um, we can see this better um, because this image as this particular image has been enhanced. So um the goal of the goal of um image enhancements is basically to improve upon um the pictorial quality um of, of images for um better visual interpretation. The enhancement is performed interactively um on a computer system using any of the techniques of, of contrast stretching um that is contained in the software package so um basically um what what this means is for 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 a raw image right when we have like a raw image the okay so let's 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 look at these histograms so this is this is the raw image and this is um what the digital um numbers are like from a scale of 0 to 250, 255, 255. So this is like an 8-bit image. The useful data for, Im for like raw images often populates only small portion of the available range of the digital values. So if you look at this, this is ranging from about 0 to, to 140. So um, what image enhancement does is basically to change these values, right? more of the available range is then being used so we, we have this original image um occupying just a small a small portion from um, 10 to 14. so so when we've enhanced the image what it does is basically just like increases on the range the range of the digital numbers in the image so now this is from 10 to 140 before and it's like basically stretched it from like 0 to 255 thereby it basically um increases this image contrast so that's why we have this image being darker and we have this like we have the contrast enhanced so we'll be talking about um types of image enhancements so the first one we'll be discussing is the um global enhancement for the global enhancement what it does is that each pixel like each pixel in the image is modified without you know we, we spoke about an image earlier in the course and an image has like a lot of pixels an image has like different pixels like it has a lot of pixels like these pixels are arranged like in grids in, in grids or cells like they are basically like in grid and they're like side they are graded in cells like side by side so basically for the global enhancement the each of the pixel in the image is modified without reference to um its neighbors you know it's 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 without reference to its neighboring pixel so so this this enhancement technique it operates on the image by pixel point operation so basically what we are trying to say is that the the digital numbers um, of the pixels are modified um, without referencing to its neighboring pixel so um i have here that the the point operation seeks to modify the brightness value of each pixel in an image in an image data um, in an image data set independently so what we are trying to do, like reference is um it 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 uh, modifies the brightness value of each pixel without referencing its neighboring pixel. So that's why it's it's it got the name like point operation. At the end of the day, the operation improves the contrast of the image. Next up, we have the uh, techniques of global contrast enhancement. So we have the linear contrast stretching. We have the histogram um, equalize equalization. We have the um, the contrast stretching under a window and we have the um, level slide um, equalization so um for this course we won't be um, going into details of each so we just move to the next um type of um, enhancements which is the local contrast enhancements so what the um, local enhancements um, does is it basically modify the value of each pixel referencing um its neighbors you remember um the previous one we spoke about it doesn't reference the its its neighbors so um but for the local enhancement that's why i got the name local because like it's trying to relate with um the neighboring pixels right local contrast enhancement um, is a local operation 
whereby the total numbers of pixels is modified in relation to its neighboring pixels. It is popularly known as filtering. Um, the local contrast enhancement basically seeks to sharpen um, edges or boundaries um, of an image. So basically, um, the, the entire operation at the end of the, of the day improves the contrast of the edges or boundaries of an image. So we'll be talking about some types of, we'll be listing some type of filtering, we'll not be talking about them in depth. So we have like high frequency filtering, we have average or linear filtering, we have Laplacian, Laplacian filtering, directional, medium frequency and low frequency, and all of this are actually grouped into linear filtering and uh, non-linear filtering. So next up, we'll talk about image transformation. So um, when we talk about image transformation, we're typically um, trying to explain spectral um, spectra ratioing. Some, some people call it spectral ratioing because it's just um, the basics of like image transformation is just um, based on simple arithmetic, like trying to calculate, trying to manipulate the data to get a new data out of out of um, the imagery. So we are trying to just perform some simple arithmetics like on the data. So um, image transformation involves the manipulation of multiple bands um, of, of a satellite imagery. So we, we, might, we might be dividing, we might be dividing um, the near infrared band with the red band. We might be dividing different bands of the image. We might even be adding some bands and subtracting some bands. So that's why I said it is basically based on like arithmetic operations. So um, Image transformation typically involves the manipulation of multiple image bands. Um, so the 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 image may be may be um, a, a whether from a single multispectral image or from two or more images um, of the same area acquired at different times. So it could be it could be from a single or um, multispectral image to probably a Landsat image or Sentinel image, and whereby we try to like manipulate different bands in the image to get a new image, or it could be from two or more image images. Um, it could be from two or more images of the same area acquired at different times. So it could be um, it could be um, in an image you got at the beginning of the year, and you're trying to like do some band match with it with an image you got um, probably um. Let's say, second quarter of the year so um either way image transformation basically generates new images um, from two or more sources which highlight particular features or properties of interest um better than the original input images so we have this uh, satellite imagery right and um it comes in bands so we have like for sentinel we have for for landsat for example we have about um i think 11 bands or thereabouts, I can't remember correctly now. So basically, what I'm trying to do is to like extract, um, get information, like we're trying to transform these bands to get like information out of them. So for example, I mentioned earlier, um, the we might be trying to like divide the, the, the near infrared band by the um, red band. So basically, all of these, all of these um, bands, right? All of these, um, all of these bands, they, they, they are like depending on the spectral response, right? They have like different properties. So we can divide a particular band, another, another band, to get new information. So that's why I, I, I said earlier that it is also called spectral reassuring. So, um, for example, LD vegetation reflects strongly. In the near infrared portion of the spectrum, white also absorbs strongly in the visible red. So, um, other surface types such as soil and um, water um, they show um, about equal reflectances um, in, in both um, near infrared and red portion. When we, when, when we divide the red band by the near infrared band, so basically it gives us a new image. And now this image that is giving us it it would like range from like it's have ratio between like um like minus one to one so basically it's it's it tells us it gives us more information about the health of it, it tells us it gives us more information about the veg, about vegetation 
because like LD vegetation reflects because LD vegetation re reflects strongly in the near infrared portion and it's also like absorbed strongly in the in, in, in the visible spectrum. So if we divide this band, if we divide the near infrared band by the by the red band, it gives us information about the health of the inf it gives us information about the health of the vegetation. So it's the, the new band right has like um values ranging from minus one to one. So when we have values like that are bit, that are like minus one, we know when we have values like minus one or zero, we know that okay, this is definitely not vegetation. But when we have it might be water, it might be built up, but when we start having values between two to like five, then we know okay, this is basically this is basically vegetation. There's something going on here. So when we have values greater than five, then we can say, oh, this vegetation is actually very healthy. This is a forest. So you know, with with just those, um, with, with just that that understanding of um, image transformation, we could get different um, information. For example, for Landsat thematic mapper, if we divide band three by band four, it basically gives us more information about the barrier land. This is basic. This is like the basic concept of image transformation. Trying to trying to like divide different um, bands of a multispectral image and trying to get a new information um, out of it. So this is where the concept of um, normalized um, difference um, indexes come from. So you know when you divide um, the red, the red and the and the, the near infrared and the red bands, you get like it talks about uh, it talks about it talks about the eldiness of, um, of of the vegetation. If you divide another band by another band and you normalize it, it gives you normalized difference. You know, you have like normalized different indexes for, for soil, we have for water, we have for built up. To get all this, basically all we have to do is to just divide a particular band by another band. So um, band math is basically how we transform um, our images. Next, we'll move to image classification. So the the basic um, goal of classifying our uh, image is to categorize all the pixels um, in a digital image into one or several land land cover classes or or or, or teams. Um, after we've like categorized our data, we could produce a thematic map of um, land cover. Just like something I, I, I did here, I did this about two years back. I can't remember correctly now. So um, image classification is the process of assigning land cover classes to pixels. Um, for example, some of the classes could include water bodies, um, built up forest, and you know, agricultural land and and and, and grassland. So yeah, I have um, I categorized them into like low intensity built up. Um, shrub forest lake or pond river cropland you know burial land and and um, and so on and so forth so basically image classification is um, when we are trying to assign um different land cover classes um to pixels um in 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 the image so we have we have um for this course we'll be talking just we're we'll talking about just two types of classification which is like the supervised classification and the unsupervised classification. So um, for supervised classification, what we do is we identify um, different information classes. So these information classes um, are known as um, land cover type. So we identify different land cover type of interest. So if you look at this image, right, this is a um, first color composite. So you could see this uh, built up and um this is also built up somewhere here and um everywhere we have red everywhere we have red uh um, vegetation um if we, if we see uh, something that is appearing very dark it could possibly be a um, water body but i could easily identify um vegetation or uh, forest and i could identify uh built up could identify built up looking at this image so um these are like the information classes and we can also call them like the land cover type so what we do is we we for for every um, information class we create training samples so we we take we take we take like we take samples we take pixels this to create this training sample what we do is we, we take pixels that have um this built up we take them around the map so i take um some pixels around here 
so I'm, I'm basically training so I take some pixels here I take some pixels here I take some pixels around this point I take some pixels around here I take some pixels around here so um, when I've taken enough pixels around the entire um, image um, to represent a particular um, land cover class so um, here we are using um, build up so all, all, then I, 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 I save it then the next thing I do is um, for the vegetation I also like take um, um, some red pixels I take them randomly around around the image so I also save them so now this this training samples eventually like the training sample for for the vegetative cover and also um, for the for the build up at the end of the day we generate a signature file from it which which stores all this training sample information so then the image processing software, um, depending on the algorithm we, we, we pick, probably maximum likelihood or minimum distance, um, what, what the imaging software does is to develop a um, statistical characterization um, of, the, of the reflectance of each of the information class or the land cover type. So um, the, the statistical char characterization could be based on um, mean, it could be based on um, range of it could be based on the mean of the reflectance it could be based on um, range of reflectance of each band or it could be it could it could, it could take um, variance or covariance of all the bands so basically once the um, statistical characterization has been achieved for each of the information class so here we just identified built up and um, vegetation so once um, the statistical Characterization has been achieved for each of the classes. What 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 the um the system does is it classifies the image by examining the reflectance of each pixels and making a decision about which of the signatures um a particular class resembles the most. So remember what we did was what 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 we like did was just to like pick random pixels to represent a particular class. So we pick um, random pixels to represent build up and we pick random pixels to represent vegetation so what this does right what this supervise um so the, the process of picking is where we got the name supervised because we are, we, are, we are like training samples we are classifying training samples so it's like we are supervising what we are doing so basically at the end of the day the training um samples we've picked so the the, the reflectance value of all of this um, training samples we've picked um, for the um, for the um, say build up and vegetation you know we are picking different across the entire image so what this system does is that it, it's it's kind of with the statistical characterization it does on the um, image so it kind of like groups all of the um, spectral re um, res all of the spectral reflectance that have similar numbers like similar digital numbers it groups them into the same class so at the end of the day when we run any of these um algorithms to classify our image say we pick a uh, maximum likelihood at the end of the day we have the entire image classified into um say land cover types so here it will be classified into um built up and vegetation so we don't necessarily have to like take every pixels in the image so we just have to like train um, the classifier with just some samples like we just take samples across the image anywhere we see built up we just take samples across the image and we use it to train um, the entire image so I just like try to like take my time to explain because um, I'm not doing this um, in a software it's it's quite conceptual and I'm trying to like take my time to explain that so um, that is that about supervised classification so up next we'll go to unsupervised classification so um for unsupervised classification um we don't have to like train samples the way we are like training samples earlier so um it is left for the um, classifier to make a decision by itself so what what it does is um it it's it kind of assumes like different classes for for what it could see on the image so it it's automatically groups um digital numbers or reflectance values that are actually um, close together so the reflectance value of um of a particular land cover type will be similar if they are like the same if, if, if they are 
under the same class so um veg like the vegetative covers right the the red portion would have similar reflectance value like the red portion um on this side of the map would also have similar reflectance value with with the red portion here and the built up here would also have similar reflectance value with this so what the classifier does is it's it's it is unsupervised right so it trains itself it it uses like the reflectance value of 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 the image of the entire image and it uses that to basically group um, to group the image into number into a number of classes so say we want um three classes you could tell the classifier to classify this image by itself to to three classes so it basically learns it learns from the like um digital numbers and the reflectance and it, it learns from the reflectance values of each pixel in the image and it classifies the entire image so you could classify um this image into three classes to us you could classify it to build up um low um dense vegetation and like um sparse vegetation so it could just like based on on what it like can what the classifier can detect from the image it classifies the image automatically so that's why we have um the name on supervised classification so basically um that will be all for for like this session so we've talked about all we need to talk about in like this um this course so and uh, remember at the end of every session we give assignments so the 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 goal of this course right is to demystify remote sensing that's why we've been taking out time to basically like talk about the concept of remote sensing before we move into the practical sessions to like practicalize out everything we've like been discussing so um we we appreciate it when you like go home and like you just ruminate on what we've said and also take out time to to do something on your own like regarding all what we said so um for all of these classifications we've mentioned um we could basically check for the accuracy we could like oh is um is my classifier classifying a particular class correctly um for example here we have um vegetative cover so um is my classifier not classifying this as a beautiful so basically we check for like the accuracy assessment of like um what we've classified using our um using our classification techniques so um that is why we have this asset um that's why we have this assignment so basically the assignment is um is for us to like um read more on accuracy assessments like we have to learn accuracy assessments how do we do accuracy assessments how do we even assess the accuracy um, of an image so um that's the assignment for for this week and um just to like leave a note before we conclude the series so um this is a disclaimer basically um i'm trying to um inform our viewers that um, the materials provided in this presentation and any comments or information provided by me the presenter are solely and as are solely for educational purposes and have been gathered from various online resources so i i really appreciate you if you've made it to this point in the video i mean you have my gratitude i appreciate you like so much um thank you for sticking with us like so far from the course i i hope you've been able to like understand i i, I hope we have been able to like demystify remote sensing to you in a way that you understand more about um what 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 was probably probably vague to you earlier so um we would appreciate it if you leave comments below if you like yes kindly leave comments let us know what you feel about the course um kindly like the video um subscribe to our youtube channel and also for the just special community we are trying to build um kindly join our slack channel so um thank you so much for sticking around and be expecting more just special content from the special thank you very much bye everyone